All right, it's time to talk some Shakespeare with, oops, I was not terribly prepared there, a Midsummer Night's Dream. Yay, love my really <laughs> no frills edition of Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> it's awesome though, free Kindle edition of all of the plays, Oakshot Press. I'll leave the link below for folks um, if you want to check it out. So, hey everyone, it is Shannon. I'm here to talk about A Midsummer Night's Dream by... William Shakespeare, and this is part of ShakeTube, which is created by Lukash. Hey, Lukash! And um, so many people are participating, and thank you everyone who has left comments and watched the videos as a part of ShakeTube. This has been really so much fun, and it's especially fun for me because I was in the middle of reading Shakespeare just on my own, and so it's nice to actually engage and see other people reading Shakespeare and hearing what they get what they're enjoying about the plays and getting from the plays and all that good stuff. So it's just been so much fun. So as always, I started with my character card for A Midsummer Night's Dream because this one has a lot of zaniness um, in this one, although I don't think anyone dies. <laughs> sadly, sadly. I'm more of a fan of the tragedies and this one really let me know that I'm not so much a fan of the comedies. And this one really is comedic. There's lots of misunderstandings and oopsies and little tricksies and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's one of the, definitely one of the more lighthearted plays um, that I have read uh, thus far. It might be the most lighthearted. Tugel and Mar Verona might be a little, no, I think people, no, I think this one is. Anyway, so we have Theseus and Hippolyta who are about to get married and to entertain them during this wedding we have the players who are going to put on a play um, for that and as they are discussing that I think they are overheard by Oberon and Titania who are the king and queen of the fairies and um, Oberon decides to play a trick on Titania but it ends up going awry. Um, in the midst of all this we also have a bunch of humans. We have Aegisius who's Daught and his daughter Hermia is in love with Lysander, but Demetrius wants to marry Hermia. But Helena loves Demetrius. So we have all these people. But the good one good thing about this is that Helena and Lysander actually do love each other. So we have one consensual couple, and I guess two, Theseus and Hippolyta. And Oberon and Titania, I don't think they're actually a couple. I think he's the king, she's the queen and they do their own thing. For me, this one's a bit weird because I have seen a lot of these characters and learned a lot of these ideas and a lot of the points of references in other things. Um, and so for me, the character of Titania comes up a lot in urban fantasy. If you read urban fantasy and read anything with fairies, often Titania is a character because she's queen of the fairies and less often I would find Oberon is a character because he's the king of the fairies but Titania is often there if you like there there's a lot if you read urban fantasy and paranormal romance if they use fairies if you know Titania is usually there um so for me one of the things about this play that I like I just I wasn't super jiving with it it's a comedy and there's a lot of as I said oopsies and making Oberon makes sends Puck to go make people fall in love and they always end up falling in love mostly with the wrong people. And I think he mostly does this as a trick to Titania and she falls in love with Bottom, who is one of the players, but he has an, a donkey head, an ass head, so he's Bottom and he's ass at the same time. Isn't that funny? Haha. -ha. I'm not really a comedy person. <laughs> I, it's funny. There's so many things I find funny, but often it's not comedies. <laughs> anyway, so Titania falls in love with Bottom and then accidentally Demetrius does he fall in love with someone? No, Lysander falls in love with Helena, and Demetrius also falls in love with Helena, and then Hermia is kind of like, what's going on? Like, the guy I love is now not in love with me, and the guy that was my suitor is now in love with someone else, so what's going on here? And then they sort of, like, you know, Oberon's like, hey, Puck, go fix this. Uh, and then, so it all sort of gets reset. And maybe, maybe, for me, the key of that is that's what doesn't super jive with me is that at the end it all gets sort of reset so it's kind of like what did we learn here not that we have to learn something but it's like what's the story here what are we telling are we are we here to just simply be entertained um and there's nothing wrong with that but like i feel like is there more is there more do i guess i want more um and so and also the comedy, when you're reading it, I find it doesn't come across as much. Also, I find, even though this was a reread for me, I did read it in high school, but that was a very long time ago. Um, but I do find, like, during my Shakespeare project, I find that on first read, all I'm really trying to do is figure out what happens. 
what is going on? And in here, this one they found it was very clear. There's a wedding, there's people that, you know, want to get married, but there's another suitor, the dad's not happy. And then there's the play, everyone falling in love with the wrong people. And all of the scenes between Hermia and Helena and Lysander and Demetrius, all about like the, why aren't you in love with me? Or why are you in love with me? And I love you so much. Like it all, it just, they feel like they go on for a fair amount of time. And I'm sure seeing them on stage with great actors is very entertaining. Um, but reading it, I felt like, okay, I get the gist of this. He's under a fairy spell. He's in love with the wrong person. Okay. I got it. I got it. So this is a little, <laughs> it's a little harsh on my end, but that's okay. I don't mind it. And I'd actually, I'd be curious to go and see some different versions of it. I think there is a film version with perhaps Michelle Pfeiffer. That is what is coming to my mind. I have seen productions of this. I worked at a theater that did an all female cast for a Midsummer Night's Dream years ago. Don't remember it that well. Don't remember it that well. Oddly, my references for this story are, as I said already, external um, and mostly urban fantasy. But my strongest memory of this story actually is Dead Poet Society. <laughs> you know, that is really, when I think of this play, that's what comes to mind. The If We Shadows Have Offended um, speech in Dead Poet Society, which has a very different tone than this play because it's very... It, from my interpretation, it feels very jovial. It feels very entertainment. We are here to entertain you. It's a play within a play. All of this stuff goes wrong. Isn't it funny? Ta-da-da, we'll fix it all up. It's all good. Da! Like that sort of, but like Dead Poet Society is really heavy. So not, to, well, I hope everyone's seen Dead Poet Society. I don't think, I'm not spoiling anything here. But for me, the tone and the moment where they use this play in that film, it doesn't really match up with what I get from reading the play, although it's a great moment and it's very powerful. So I think sometimes like I'm tying that together. So it'd probably be good to watch a production. If anyone has any suggest suggestions for any film film versions of Midsummer Night's Dream, I'd love to hear them because I'd love to check them out because um, I think there's a lot of joy in, in especially in the characters sort of acting different from themselves. Um, and that's always, you know, there's a great role. There's tons of great roles. Puck is a great role. I think it's like, if you're in, if you want to be in this play, I think you want to be Puck, I would imagine. Um, I would think. Although I did find Puck a little confusing because nobody seemed to see him. He seemed to be on stage a lot of time and nobody saw him. And that definitely happens a lot in this play. There's lots of people on the stage and they're not seeing each other. Mind you, they're in the woods a lot. So I guess there can be different levels. So I can imagine wanting to do a production of this play because there's so much interesting going on. But in terms of straight up just reading it, I wasn't that engaged. So, and there was, I will say that one thing that did come back to me though, was I did remember reading the Wondrous Strange uh, trilogy by Leslie Livingston a couple years ago, it is an, it's a teen urban fantasy series about someone, a girl who uh, is in or is helping with a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. And they really do use a lot of the fairy lore and the characters that are in this or other characters in, in the story. And so I really enjoyed that. And so that was, I think, my most recent recollection of the story cropping up somewhere else. And I thought it was really well done. And I, now I've read a lot more um, urban fantasy um, and stuff with fairy or fae in it so um this but i think that one was the first thing that i read and it happened to be very tied to a midsummer night's dream so i have really good memories of that series so anyway this one was not you know one of the things i will say for it is that it was pretty easy read most of the most of the acts only had two scenes yeah, just two scenes. So it did feel a lot shorter than a lot of the other plays. I ended up getting through it very quickly. Um, and so there was that. One more down. So woohoo. The next up for Shake Tube is The Merchant of Venice, which I actually read during the summer. So I'm actually going to come off the Shake Tube train for a little bit. I have a few other things going on. And I've read the next sort of set of several plays, but I will be back for Hamlet. And I might start that one early because I think it's the longest title, um, but that won't be until the end of October. So I will see you in the end of October for uh, for Hamlet, but I definitely will be looking forward to seeing everyone's thoughts on Midsummer Night's Dream and Merchant of Venice and all of the other plays in between. So there you go, Midsummer Night's Dream, another Shakespeare play. Damn, damn. Ah. <laughs> Thanks for watching.